Uh, okay. I know what you're gonna say. I come back to you now, at the turn of the tide. Don't you mean... The board is set. The pieces are moving. Alright, but you're you're Gandalf. You're, you have this, like, thou shalt not pass, right? That's, that's your thing. Gandalf. Right? Gandalf the Grey, yes, that's what they used to call me. Clearly, uh, I really just need to get to my desk. Greetings, fellow maker. I'm Brittany Duran from Punished Props. Recently, we were presented with a challenge from our old college professor and friend who wants to dress as Gandalf the White during a college graduation ceremony. He asked us to make his staff, but the staff needed to be collapsible for sitting. This was just going to be a little quick side project, but I ended up using some techniques that were new to me and I wanted to make sure to share them with you. For the staff topper, I used Jamunson's 3D model over on Thingiverse. The model was printed in ABS filament on our Ultimaker. To make sure that ABS would stick down, a slurry of acetone and ABS printed supports were mixed together. This container design is great for other materials as well. We'll link to Evil Ted's video on creating one of these in the description. The mixture is brushed onto the bed of the Ultimaker and just left there. We found this helps the ABS bond really well to the bed for printing, but is still easily removed when the print cools down. The staff was split into two pieces and no supports were necessary. Everything's at just the right angle so it can still print up without supports and that was really cool to watch. It wasn't until I printed the staff that I realized the gem in the center isn't normally in Gandalf the White's staff. It was included in the model to have the option for a cool glowy light. It would have been awesome to print this piece in transparent filament and light up the gem from below, but I already printed it so I just have to make it look a little sparkly with paint later in the build. I was using a raft for the prints, which broke off on the second half of the staff. The connection to the raft didn't seem to bond well, so I switched to a brim and that worked great. I sanded the connections between the staff pieces, then drilled a hole for a peg kind of attachment. I wasn't confident in my gluing skills and the peg would hopefully help me align the halves together. Plus, this adds some extra structural support. A little epoxy was mixed and added to the dowel connection, but the rest of the staff was glued together with the acetone and ABS slurry. I always wear gloves and wear a respirator when working with acetone as well. Before the mixture set, I wiped away the squeeze out as much as I could. This connection set super fast and it seems pretty strong. The outside of the staff was sanded with 200 grit sandpaper, but I didn't know how to reach all of the inside parts for sanding. This seemed like a good instance to try acetone vapor smoothing. We did a small scale test to see how this filament reacts to the acetone. I'll link a great article in the description that goes over this process. Apparently, the type of ABS and even the color can affect how long the filament needs to be acetone exposed. We made a little stand and caddy to get the print in and out of the mason jar. You don't want to touch the print at all during this process. This is cold acetone smoothing, so no heat is required. Which is good because this stuff is really flammable and I made sure to keep it away from any kind of heat source. We found that this particular filament and setup took about an hour to get pretty smooth, but the top of the print wasn't getting as melty as the bottom. Lining the container with acetone soaked paper towels would help with the distribution, but instead we just flipped the print over and left it in for another hour. After that, the print looked nice and smooth. The top of the print and some of the underhangs still looked a bit crunchy, but the rest looked great. The hard edges were completely gone, which is great for really organic stuff, this could be a problem for the staff design, but I wanted to try it anyway. I lined a bucket with paper towels that were held in place with magnets. The whole bucket interior was doused with acetone and sloshed around. This is a larger volume of acetone, so I worked outside. I checked on the staff after an hour and noticed the same problem as the small scale test. Only the bottom area was smoothing. Bill modified the stand with legs that were just long enough to suspend the staff upside down, but still fit inside the bucket. After another hour in the container, the entire surface became glossy. The filament is still soft and pliable for about half an hour, and touching it will definitely leave fingerprints. 
The article I read said the acetone can take quite a while to evaporate, so I left the print overnight. On first inspection, the staff looked pretty smooth, but when held up to the light, you could see all the lumpy areas. I could also see some of the infill. I left the wall thickness at the default settings in Cura. Adding more outside layers may help prevent the print wall from slumping into the support. I was super happy that the hard to reach areas looked smooth enough to leave alone, even though they were a little lumpy. The exterior was sanded again, but I left the twiddly bits alone. I was curious how well the primer would adhere to the unsanded areas. I want to take a moment to thank our patrons. Thanks to you, we're able to make all of this video content. To show our appreciation, we've been recording extra content in a vlog format. We release one a week and you can find those over on our Patreon. Some of those vlogs have some behind the scenes stuff on the staff build. I also just added a Punish Props Academy extra credit video that goes over my thoughts on this whole process, what I would have done differently, and some other things I want to try in the future. So head on over to patreon.com slash punish props to check out all of that content. Thanks again, patrons. Now back to the build. For the rest of the staff, I got a white extendable pole designed for a duster attachment. The pole is in three segments and can be locked into place by twisting the sections. I tried removing the sticker with heat, which technically worked, but all of the adhesive was left behind. Goo adhesive remover cleaned off the residue. This pole has a top and bottom that I don't need. Plus, the whole thing is 10 feet, so I can remove one of the sections and still have a long enough staff. I cut off the end bits, which let the pole section slide free, and I could check out the way that the whole thing locks together. It's a really neat design with a flexible piece of plastic that can fit inside the pole until it's locked in place on the threads. The largest segment was removed, and I kept the other two, but I did chop them down a bit. The staff topper would take up some of the height and I wanted to make the collapsed version small enough to not be obtrusive while sitting. The pole to staff connection wasn't a perfect match, but I thought it still looked fine for this quick build. A section of the 3D print was removed to create a slotted connection. I heated the pole a bit and pressed it into place. I think that made the connection a little more snug. Whenever I combine metal to any other material, I use JB Weld Epoxy. The staff was held in place until the epoxy set, and then I did another round of sanding. The paint did chip off some of the areas that weren't sanded at all, so this time I made sure to sand the whole surface. Well, everything I could reach. I did spray a white layer of primer over the gray. This helps with spotting the low spots, since those were gray, and I knew which spots to sand down. After this round of sanding, I sprayed on more white primer and then a layer of normal white spray paint that has a satin finish. The bottom of the staff was still a sharp metal pole, so I got some rubber chair tips that were hopefully the right diameter for the pole base. And it was a great fit. For the last touch, I masked off some of the staff squiggles and thought about how I would brush on a different finish for the gem. It was a pretty tight fit. I mixed acrylic floor care with some of our sparkly powders. This finish is pretty watery, but it doesn't leave any brush strokes, which is really handy. And with that, the Gan of the White Staff build was done. This project only took a few days and I had a lot of fun playing around with acetone smoothing and figuring out how to make a collapsible staff. That's something I think I'll use in the future if I ever have to make another wizard staff or even a long pole weapon. Being able to shrink the pole down for transport is a huge bonus. With every build I do, there's always things I wish I did differently and want to change in the future. I'll go more into that on our extra credits video over on Patreon. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope this build inspires you on your next project. Boop. Hey, thanks for watching. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe so you don't miss any of our new weekly prop and costume tutorial videos. For more goodies, head over to our website where you'll find blueprints, tutorial books, articles, and more. We also have a second channel for our Q&A show and extra behind the scenes videos. Thanks again and happy crafting.